All right, let's dive into all the A-level proofs which you will need. So I've made just like a quick list um, of the stuff which you want to know before you go into it. So the first thing is when they give you questions like, uh, or prove that a certain quadratic is always positive or negative. Uh, second, differentiation, uh, differentiate from first principles. I'm going to show you how sine x works and then how something like x cubed plus 6x works. And hopefully then you get the idea so you can replicate it. Um, I do want to show you a very weird proof. It's the one for y equals 2x and y equals 2x ln 2. Um, it's very easy. Uh, proof square root of 2 is rational. This one's really important. Okay, this one really is really improvement, important. Prove that there are infinitely many primes. That's one, which I, th I think these two are high riskers. Uh, I mean, this is going to come up, but this is once you get... Uh, I think, yeah, uh, that one's important too. I do, and I hope this one comes up. This one's just easy anyway. But anyway, carrying on. Um, prove that the SN of, um, was it arithmetic sequence is that and then just dealing with odd and even stuff, which we'll look at. Um, I've got this kind of question sheet up. You know, have you noticed they, in this one they say, oh, prove by contradiction, if, if n is odd, then n cubed plus 1 is even. Product of two odd numbers is odd. And they like to use that a lot, so we just want to cover it all. Okay, so let's just start kind of uh, going through it. The first one, prove that a quadratic is always positive or negative. They won't word it like that, by the way. It'll be something like... Uh, Prove that for all x, um, I don't know, prove for all x or something, yeah? And they might kind of give you something like, prove that this is true. Okay, so essentially that's saying, prove that this bit of algebra is greater than 10. Well, the first thing you do is always actually make into it just like a quadratic. And then beyond that, you know what it is? And just to prove that this is always greater than zero, you want to uh, complete the square. It's always completing the square. So you've got that, and then what would it be? Plus 15, yeah? Well, now let's have a look at that. Well, that's going to be always uh, positive, and obviously 15 is positive. So you basically got a positive plus positive. So naturally, that's going to be greater than or equal to 10. Does that make sense, yeah? And just like for the sake of uh, quickly kind of getting in as well, if they, the only way, um, the opposite to that is to show that something is always negative. So this would be something like, say if they gave you minus x squared, um, what else would it be? Minus x squared, why am I overthinking this? Plus 10x plus, minus seven is always greater than zero. Basically, in short, what you do is you um, you just complete the square. And what you'll get is, I, I'm not doing this, but you may get something like this. Uh, I'm making these numbers up, by the way. It's not actually the right one. So what you can kind of see there is, you know that's always positive, but because it's made negative, that's always now negative. And then you're taking away a positive number as well. So positive, take away something, whatever. You can see it's negative, okay? So that's the first one sorted. Okay, done. Let's get on to the next one. Differentiate from first principles. So whenever you're differentiating by first principles, so we'll call it like a f of x equals sine x. Again, okay? they want to show that, prove that from first uh, principles that differentiates to cos x. Here's the formula you always need to use. Function x plus h minus function of x over h okay so what we're going to do we're going to be doing it for that one um so can you see it will become like sine x plus h minus sine x over h and you always kind of, oh yeah limit as h tends to zero so you've got limit as h tends to zero and what you do for this one is you do uh, you know, sine x plus h, you do the double angle formula, that's saying sine a plus b. So you're going to get uh, sine x cos h plus uh, cos x sine h. And then you still get the minus sine x. And you've got this all over h as well. Okay, still that limit to h goes to zero. I'm not going to bother writing that every time. 
Okay, uh, now what you're going to do is, you know on the top, you're going to pull out sine x. And can you see you'd get cos h uh, minus 1. So I've kind of joined like this one and this one up. And then you're going to do the plus cos x. And can you see you've only got like a sine h here. And this is all over h again. So now what we can do is we can kind of split this. So we can kind of sort of tell me that hopefully this makes sense. You've got sine x and the bracket is cos of h over 1 over h. There you go there. And with the cos x thing, you've got sine h over h. Okay, so I've just kind of like, essentially I've just skipped two things there. It's where you'd be skipping that, you know, you'd be splitting that and you just kind of put sine x out. So, okay, now let's have a look at, uh, you remember, this is still lim of h tends to zero. The way we're going to, what we want is we want this to equal one and we want this to equal zero. So this can go and we're just left with cos x times one, so it's cos x. Now let's see why that works, okay? So firstly, sine h over h, why does this go to one? Well, uh, you know the small, what was it called? Do you remember when uh, h is small, you know that sine h is roughly equal to h? Do you remember that? So essentially, as uh, you know, h tends to 0, this tends towards h and over h, so that's why you get that 1, okay? So over here, you get the cos x. And you just want, you just write this bit. You know, you'd write that after this line or something. You can just kind of write, just for point of showing that you can do that. Now let's see why this kind of tends to zero. Well, cos of h as it's small, this one tends towards uh, one. Does that, make, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Why? Um, here's why. So, you know, can you see like, the sine graph, uh, the cos graph at zero starts at one. So if you kind of have h tending towards zero, cos of h kind of goes towards one. So what you need to write is cos h minus one over h equals one minus one over h, which equals zero. So you get sine x zero. And then obviously, of course, at the end of this, you just get cos of x. Does that make sense? Okay, now obviously I'm showing you the sine one because I think the sine or cos is very similar as well, yeah? They're important because they're, you know, they're just basically like an example you want to know. But it's this thing which I want you to feel good about. That's how it works. Uh, let me just rub that out. And just for the sake of it, let me show you like another one as well just so you feel particularly good. Feel, if you feel like you got it, obviously feel free to skip the video at any time. Okay, so let's have a look at how you'd, uh, you know. So say if this was like x cubed plus 6x. Well, the first thing is uh, just do this one separately and do this one separately. So we're just really looking that if you've got x uh, cubed, then dy by dx equals uh, 3x squared. And it's pretty nice stuff, to be honest. So let's have a look at this. So you're kind of basically going... Um, x plus h oh, cubed is such a pain man okay um minus x cubed over h i'm not going to bother writing that limit of h tends to zero the whole time so we're going to do it okay oh all right so we've got to do this thing um okay x plus h x plus h that's x squared plus 2xh plus h squared now imagine if I'm times that by x plus h. So I'm going to get x cubed plus x squared h plus 2x squared h plus 2x h squared plus h squared x plus h cubed. If I clean that up, what do we get? x cubed. Uh, these two join. So you get plus 3x squared h, then what have you got? You've got these two joining, plus 
x h squared plus h cubed. Okay, so basically what you kind of get here is you get x cubed plus 3x squared h uh, plus 3x h squared plus h cubed minus the x cubed. Don't forget that one there. All going over h. So you can kind of see those go. And now if I just kind of split these up, here's what I kind of get. I get 3x squared h over h plus 3x h squared over h. Uh, and you get h cubed over h. So can you see when you, so this one just ends up being 3x squared. This one ends up being 3x h plus h uh, squared. There we go there. And as h goes to zero, can you see this is going to go to zero, this is going to go to zero, and that's why it uh, differentiates like that. Yeah, feel free to skip as I kind of like uh, rub this up. You think I could just kind of like select a big uh, area and just press delete, but I don't know, man. I, like this program does not allow it, which is ridiculous. But anyway, let's ca let's uh, let's carry on. Okay, so uh, that's uh, which one have we got just done? We have got the first principle stuff done. Okay. Oh, let, let's look at this one. This is really nice uh, proof. This one, yeah. So you've got to somehow prove that y equals two to the x is going to equal that, yeah. And here's how it is. So it's like a little trick which you know here. So first you take the logs of both sides. So can you see that's become ln two two x ln two to the x? But can you see that becomes x ln two? So now what we do is we differentiate each side. So now we get 1 over y dy by dx equals, can you see that was just going to become ln2. And now we just times by y both sides. dy by dx equals y ln2. Don't forget y is 2 to the x in the first place. And that's it. That's the entire uh, proof. Okay, so it's quite a nice one, isn't it? And obviously, uh, instead of the 2, they could have put any other number, but that goes without saying as well, you know, 3 to the x or whatever. Okay, uh, actually, before I go into these, which are important, let's just get this one out of the way as well. S to the n. Uh, so why does, how did they get to that sum of the sequences thing? Here's how it is. So let's uh, let's start by kind of considering like an arithmetic sequence. So you have a, a plus d, a plus 2d, da 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 all the way up to a plus uh, n minus 1 d. Does that make sense, yeah? So, you know, obviously s of n, which would just be like adding the first uh, n terms, so this would be your first term, this would be your second term, this would be your third term, this would be your n term, okay? So s of n, uh, obviously, is going to be uh, a plus, and you'll see why I'm kind of like spacing this out a little bit as well. No, one more term, no, not two way. A plus D, if I just kind of like draw underlined as well, plus A plus 2D, go on forever, and uh, A plus N minus 1D. Okay, now I want obviously, can you see that uh, I could also rewrite this backwards as well? So, literally, I'm just kind of gonna imagine writing it from the, uh, the right to left. Okay, so you got that. Now this one will be a plus n minus 2d. Does that make sense? This one will be a plus n minus 3d. Dot, dot, dot. Plus, um, well, a. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. I want you to imagine what's happening if I add both of these things up. So imagine I added up any pair back to the front sort of thing. Well, what you're going to get, what I want you to see that it equals uh, 2a plus n minus 1d. Now this one's actually pretty obvious when you can see that. So I want to imagine we actually add this. So imagine we're looking at 2sn, yeah? So if we add this, can you see this one's going to give you a 2a plus n minus 1d. And actually if you look at this, you're going to get exactly the same as well because you've got a plus d plus a plus n minus 2 d well you can see they go to 2a so you got plus d now if i just kind of i mean fingers crossed it should actually be pretty straightforward to see from there you got n minus 1 d add 1 that's going to become n minus uh so you got n minus 2 d 
I don't know the deets going to be that, but if it's not clear, I'll kind of just uh, do a quick um, multiply out. You can see that, so I can add those together. Like I'm plus MD minus D, 2A, and you do get 2A plus uh, N minus 1D. Basically, every pair, when you add them, becomes that thing. Okay, so uh, if I just go back to this one, see so if we have like 2A plus N minus 1D, and that's what you keep having all the way up to here as well. And basically, here's what the deal is. So, uh, you know that 2SN, if you added these two things together, you literally get N lots of these things. Because remember, there's N terms in the first place. You've got N pairs. So it, this literally is N lots of 2A plus N minus 1D. Final step, divide by 2. Does that make sense? Oh, not even that. It's just, there you go. Okay, so that's the proof of that. Oh, man, what happened? Okay, so that one's now done. It's actually pretty nice, isn't it? It's kind of, it's just, it just, you kind of just go through very quick, quick, quick. Okay, now let's look at root two is rational. Let me kind of get the book out as well. It's easier just kind of work straight from it. Okay. Um, okay, here's what you do. Okay, so first thing to understand is what does rational mean? Uh, so f what you do is you try. You do this by kind of saying, uh, so the same, prove root 2 is rational. What you do is you start by thinking, by saying, okay, well, let's look at if it was irrational. So you kind of, and you might as well just get kind of used to writing this as well, yeah? Because if this proof comes up, you just need to write it. And as long as they see that. So it's like, okay, uh, assume root 2 can, is rational. By the way, rational means you can write it as a fraction. So like, uh, imagine that you can write it as a number over number. And then we, you have to write this as well, uh, where A and B are integers, and here's the, which is obviously because you want whole numbers, with no common factors. Now here's all this means. It says, imagine that this can be written as a fraction. So like, we want to write it in like its simplest form, 3 over 5, so we wouldn't write it like that. So we're like... If we're considering the 6 over 5, well, let's make A and B the numbers which cancel down, okay? So the point being, it can't be 6 over 10. They can't have a number which they can divide by. That's how we're starting off, okay? So assume root 2 equals A over B, where A and B are integers with no common factors. This is important, okay? This is a ve This matters. You've got to write that. Bear with me. Okay, so here's what you basically kind of go and then do. Okay, um, and by the way, oh yeah, A, B, R. No, I forget, that's fine. Okay, then you can kind of say like, well, you know if this is the case, can you see that if I times uh, both sides by B, I get B root 2 equals A. And now if I square this, I get 2B squared equals a squared. Does that make sense? Okay. So now let's have a look at this bit. Okay. So it goes that a squared is a multiple of two because it has to be. Remember, b is a whole number. So uh, yeah, it's just like a whole number. And if you square it, it's still a whole number. And you've times it by two. So a squared is a multiple of two, which means a is a multiple of two. Does that make sense? Okay. So A is a multiple of 2. Uh, because, I mean, how else, you know, if you've got only a whole... Hopefully that makes sense anyway. If it doesn't come to me, it's like a two-second uh, explanation. So, okay. So now you're fully kind of happy with that. Now here's what we can do. We can now say that, well, you know, A we can write as... Um, we can write as even, basically. Okay, so we know it's some sort of 2K or something. We know it's even. So this means, imagine you've got 2b squared equals uh, 2k squared. Hope that makes sense. Uh, 
Yeah, so then b squared, so if we kind of look at that, so 2b squared, this will equal 4k squared, and you get b squared equals 2k squared. So what we've just figured out here is b squared is a multiple of 2, so therefore b is a multiple of 2. Now, let's go back to this now here, okay? We said clearly that these two are in their simplest form. Right, so we can't have something like a 4 over 10 because that would cancel down to a 2 over 5, right? We're saying they have no common factors. But what we've just found is that A is a multiple of 2. So imagine A would be something like a 10 and B is a multiple of 2. So it'd be like a 14, which means if they've got, if they're both multiples of 2, that means they have a common factor, okay? That's the problem. Okay? And that's how the proof is thing. Uh, how, so what do you need to kind of write? Go... However, uh, this, well, actually, no, let's write something better. Uh, this means A and B are multiples of 2 and therefore have common. Two, yeah. This contradicts initial assumption, or whatever, of no common factors. Therefore, square root of two uh, does not it. Is not irrational. Does that make sense? It's actually pretty straightforward. I think the only kind of hard bit where someone might kind of find it tough to understand is why you would just write a equals 2k. And we're just trying to say because we know it's a multiple of 2, we can do that. And by then shoving it back in, we kind of uh, make it clear that 2 has to be a multiple of 2, so they have the common factor. Hopefully that makes sense. To be honest, even if it didn't, you could just literally kind of get to the stage of writing it out. But just come to me. Honestly, it's, it's very easy to understand. If you do understand it, your life is easier. So I'm, I'm going to pause the video for a second and uh, come back. Okay. Um, so now let's do... Let me check it's recording. Yep. Okay, now let's look at the proof of there are infinitely many primes. This one's really lovely as well. And there's seven steps, okay? So make sure you can uh, follow through it. And label them uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven as well, because then it just makes it easier for you to remember and um, write off. Okay, so number one. So they're saying, again, we're going to go, so we want to prove that there are infinitely many primes. We start out by assuming the opposite, that there are uh, a finite number of primes, okay? So it's like, Assume uh, there are a finite number of primes. Let's actually come over this. Side. And label them. You know, so for example, uh, P1, if we call that the first prime, that would be 2. Uh, P2, that's the second prime, that's 3. Uh, P3, that would be 5, and so on. Oh yeah, let's say, and should I say here, okay, say n. So we're saying that there's n number of primes. So we can kind of keep going and then you know you get pn minus 1 and pn, okay? Now here's a big point, okay? This is the largest. pn is the, our largest prime. Okay, number 2. Here's what we're going to do now, okay? Uh, consider... Uh, Consider a number, let's call it just P, yeah, where you multiply all these primes together. So this P1, P2, P3, all the way up to Pn minus 1 and Pn. Okay, so we've just got like a number uh, and we've called it, so we've multiplied all the primes together and just called it P, okay? Now, here's the next thing. Are you happy that P is a multiple of every single prime in this world? Okay, so right, P is a multiple 
of every prime. Okay, number four. Okay, now what we would do, I want you to consider the number which is one bigger than that, okay? So p plus one. Now you have, so like p plus one essentially is just that add one. Okay, so one number bigger. Okay, here's what you want to do. Let's kind of consider if we divide this by uh, p1. So imagine if we let, like, um, if you divide p plus 1 by p1, you get remainder 1. So let's have a look at that as well, yeah? So j just my point kind of being is imagine you're doing like p plus 1 divided by the first prime, which is two, but that's not the point here. Can you see what we kind of get here? If you think about that, imagine if we divided that by P1, so that would go, but, so imagine you've got this plus one being divided by uh, P1, yeah? Could you see you get like P2 all the way to Pn, but then you get this one plus P1, okay? So this would actually equal P2, P3, all the way to Pn plus uh, remainder one. Uh, okay, uh, let me just kind of put that out there because I don't. You don't actually want to be writing that, but you don't need to write that. Put it that way. Okay, so that so it gives you remainder one, which is basically saying, so not divisible by P1. And actually the truth is, there's nothing special about P1. I could have picked P3 here, and I just would have got, you know, all of it without P3, so P1, P2, P4, blah, 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 and again a remainder one. So now, what's a good way of wording this? So let's word this in the way, uh, we can actually use exactly what's out of the book. Okay, so it goes, uh, in fact, dividing p plus 1 by any pr any prime gives you remainder of 1 now do you, the point of doing this I mean you can obviously just leave it here but just for the sake so you understand the reason for this, by the way, is what we're saying is that, you know how we showed by if we divide by P1, we get a remainder one. That means it can't divide by P, so it doesn't, it's not divisible uh, by P1. But we've just shown that P, P plus one is not divisible by any prime, okay? So here's a deal, which actually makes it a prime. Because a prime is a number which only divides by itself, and one, it's got nothing else which you can divide by. That's what we've just kind of shown. So now what you write is, so, P plus 1 is not divisible by any prime. Uh, which makes it a prime. And this is actually what's kind of done it. So remember, we kind of said originally this is the biggest one. But then p plus 1 is a number which is well, obviously one, it's bigger than that because we multiplied all of these numbers together and added 1. So we've just found a prime which is bigger than p, p uh, n in the first place. Uh, so you can kind of say p plus 1 is a prime larger than p n. Wohara, which kind of, you know, like, so it contradicts which contradicts initial assumption that Pn is largest prime. Uh, therefore, uh, what's the thing? There are infinitely many primes, so there are infinitely many primes. Just kind of like that. Okay, uh, again, hopefully that made sense. So we're actually done with all the um, proof stuff now. Just one last thing, and this one isn't very hard at all, but it's um, 
It's something which you need to know from GCSE, the final kind of thing on our list. Give me a second, I'll rub it out. Okay. Um, okay, so that's now. Just dealing with odd and even stuff right now as well. So this one's actually much nicer. Um, you know, for example, this, imagine you get a question like this. If x squared is even, uh, so prove, if x squared is even, then x must be even. Okay, um, here's basically, uh, where am I looking at the right one? Yeah, okay, fine. All right, here, here's the deal. Um, to know so if something is even, it's basically, it can be written as two multiplied by something. That makes it even. And if something is odd, it can be, it can be written as two multiplied uh, by something plus one. Basically what you do, in a way, what you're kind of, the way you think about odd is you say even plus one. Does that make sense, yeah? And by adding one, you just basically figured out that it's, um, yeah, you've got like an even plus one, all right? So what we always do with this, bear with me. So if x squared is even, what we do is we call it something. So we kind of say, oh, x squared equals 2k. Does that make sense, yeah? That's how we would kind of go about it. Wait, I wrote this right. Then x squared must be even as well. Uh, you can do this by contradiction. Yep. Okay, so it's like that. So then can you see, like, um, no, that's not so true. God, I've kind of, sorry, I've, I'm picking it, I'm doing this the wrong way. So can you see, it's, we can write this two times something. Now what we can do is it goes x must be even. So let's kind of imagine, imagine if x is even. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to look at both kind of possibilities. x is odd. So if x is even, we can call x equals 2k which makes x squared equals 4k squared, which can be written as 2 times 2k squared. You want to always take the 2 out, so it's like, oh, even. Does that make sense? So if x squared is even, that's even, okay? Now we just want to see what it's, uh, we just want to show, the way we kind of finish this is by showing that, well, if it's odd, then x squared isn't even. That's how you finish this off. So we, to kind of start off with a number by calling it odd, we call it 2k plus 1. Okay, so we just said that's how you uh, describe something as odd. Now if we square it, x squared, that'll be 2k plus 1 squared, which give you 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Now, all we want to do is we want to show that's even. So what we do is pull out 2, can you see we write 2k squared plus 2k? plus one. This stuff doesn't matter. What we've just shown here is even plus one equals odd. So what we've shown is if x is even, then x squared is even. What we've shown here is if x squared, sorry, x is odd, x squared is odd. See that? And that's how we've proven that if x squared is even, that means x must be even. Okay, we've taken that, that chance. Uh, we've gone through every single possible situation there. And that's how it works. And then what we'll just kind of do is we'll kind of um, randomly pick a few of the questions which deal with that and just show you how it works. Okay, uh, so let's just kind of pick like a random question. Uh, okay, here's one. Use proof by contradiction to prove the statement. The product of two odd numbers is odd. Okay. There you go. Hopefully you can read that. Might have to blow that up a bit. Maybe I should have made that bigger. Wait one sec. Okay. 
Okay, five marker, by the way. Good marks. Good marks here. Okay. All right. Um, so let's have a look. Proof by contradiction, by the way, is you always start by, you know, when it says, oh, prove that the product of two odd numbers is odd. You want to start off by kind of thinking, well, let's assume the opposite. So the product of two odd numbers is odd. To be honest, I don't actually see why. Okay, so let's imagine two odd numbers. Okay, so one of them can be 2k plus 1, and one of them could be like, I don't know, 2m plus 1. So they're two odd numbers, yeah? This is odd. This is odd. Okay, let's multiply them together. You get 2k plus 1, 2k plus 1. Multiply them out, you get, f no, my bad, that should be an M. Yeah, so you get 4MK plus 2K plus 2M plus 1. Well, can you see, again, you want to show that it's, uh, uh, what's the thing, uh, odd. So you pull 2 out as much as possible. Remember, you want 2 something plus 1. That's how you do odd. 2MK plus K plus M plus 1. Well, that's we just kind of shown that's even plus one. Does that make sense? That's that's odd. Okay, that's how that one works. Um, one sec. Proof by contradiction. Be with me. Have I? I think I. Um, we haven't really kind of done contradiction. Proof of two odd. Oh, there you go. To be honest, let, let me just double check the mark scheme to make sure I'm not missing something. I mean that that is the proof. I just want to make 100% sure that we're not missing something which they're very specific about. Uh, no, perfectly bang on, okay? So, assuming the thing, there exists a two odd numbers that is even. So, okay, so it start by you saying, assume that there is. Then you call it 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1. We multiply them together to get that. Can you see the uh, bracket it up as well? So, it must be odd, valid conclusion. So, there you go, okay? So, it works exactly like that. And that's really it, to be honest. I, mean, I, can, I can show you one more uh, from the sheet for the sake of how they deal with evens and odds. Notice in this, by the way, look at the last two. Prove that this is irrational. Prove that can't infinitely many primes. So they are very important things to know. Uh, the others, I don't, I don't think they're that big, to be honest, but we'll have a look at that. Okay. Um, let's have a look at this one then, okay? Prove if that n is odd. Prove that this thing. Okay, and we'll kind of do the full technical contradiction way. So, assume uh, that if okay, assume there is number when n is odd uh, that n cubed plus 1 is odd. I mean, this isn't important, but I'll go through the exact one. But here's, here's the logic. Here's where we go, okay? So we're going to say that if n is odd, okay? So we let n equals 2n plus no, no, 9. That's like the one letter not to use. 2k plus 1, okay? So now we want to do is let's have a look at what n cubed plus 1 gives you. So let's, uh, this is always a pain. So imagine we want to have a look at this basically. So this thing here, if I just do it on the side, it's uh, 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Okay, so you're going to get 8k squared, no cubed, my bad, 4k cubed uh, plus 4k squared plus 8k squared plus 4k plus 2k plus 1. So if I clean that up, you get 8k cubed plus 12k squared plus 6k plus 1. Okay, so that's what that equals. Um, so you get 8 plus 12k plus 6k plus 1. And don't forget the plus 1 now. Okay? So, uh, you know, obviously that simplified is uh, this. I mean, it's pretty straightforward now, isn't it? 
Can you see that? Now, I just want to show that it's always even, right? So if I kind of pull a 2 out, I was just kind of shown that's even. There you go, okay? So that's how I've just kind of shown it, etc. And there you go, that's basically all the proofs kind of done. It didn't take that long, did it? Where is it? Yeah, done. Excellent.